Hello everyone, I'm Sam. I'm Paul, we're gonna talk about performance and uh, we're gonna reconsider kind of how we fix poor performance. Oh, well this is really timely for me. Oh, it is, this, this talk. Yeah, because uh, last week I was looking at a website uh, and it's like, I think my website's kind of slow. Sure, yeah, I it just, that. Slow, it just feels weird. And I wasn't sure um, what to do to really fix that like, Bad load. Right. So I did uh, the normal thing, I think, that we all do. Uh, I went to Google, and I, I looked up your email address. OK, sure. Uh, OK, it's fine. Uh, and then I, I, I sent you a message. Right. I, okay. uh, I was like, Paul, I need your help, right? Yeah. Um, and then you didn't respond. Yeah. Um, so that was rough. But it's OK. Oh, it's, it's OK. Because you know, I was like, I am going to fix this myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to Google again and I, I, I typed uh, fix slow page load time. And uh, I got like all these results on Google. There was like these top 10 lists, top five. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of ways to fix my There's a lot of things. And I think we all know this. Like when it comes to performance, uh, there's a million techniques and we kind of keep them there in the back of our mind, these checklists. And uh, well, it's hard to know like what's effective or not. So actually we wanted to turn this into something a little bit more interactive, turn it into a little game. Uh, so we're gonna play a game and it's called Factor Fiction Perf Trials. And oh, um, oh. He, he said it wrong. I said it wrong? Yeah, remember we practiced this? Oh, right. right. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we're gonna play a game and it's called Factor, Factor Fiction, Fiction Perf, Perf Trials. Trials. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Sure. All right, so this game uh, is pretty, pretty, pretty good. And uh, you're gonna participate like this. You can go to this uh, in your browser, your phone, laptop, whatever. And uh, we're basically gonna try out a few different you know, techniques for just making a website faster. Um, and we wanna get your um, idea on if what, we're gonna, if what we're doing is gonna be effective or not. Yeah, like, is it going to have a lot of impact or not? So you can just use the slider they have on your phone and drag it up or down. So here, here, like, let's, everybody, let's practice. Everyone go up. It's like positive. Is it, oh, it worked. Cool. Everybody go down. <laughs> oh, man, this is like, like the wave. It's so good. Future. OK, cool. Huh. All right, so the website that we're going to be looking at, uh, it's yeah. actually so, your mom's website. My mom's website. So my mom is an author, and um, I was building a, a new website for her this summer. Uh, and so it's, it's just... It's WordPress. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. a WordPress site. Like, it's a, it's a really just, like, the kind of site that you end up with, uh, like, normally. So just a bunch of, like, plugins for, for events and things like this. And, but I didn't, like, do any optimization to it yet. Yeah. And so we're going to take this as our baseline site and see if we can make it faster. Sure. So let's just get a feel for what this site uh, is like when we load it. Yeah. So if we go into DevTools and we just turn on uh, 3G throttling to emulate what it's like on your phone, nice. and yeah, let's just load it. OK, so it's going. Da, da, da. Uh, uh, right. Uh, yeah, OK. Seems. I don't know, terrible. Seems but OK. There's room for improvement. There's an opportunity. Opportunity. That's what we like to call it. OK. okay. Uh, so I recorded it uh, using the network tab. And it looks like our final load event happens in around nine seconds. We send out 39 requests. And this is on, again, a, like a 3G network. Yeah. OK. So that's, okay. that's where we're starting. Somewhere. Sure. So uh, fix number one that I found on the internet. Yep. People seem to think that bundling all of your JavaScript together was a good idea. Hmm, so okay. taking all your individual JavaScript files, sort of catting them together in one file, and then shipping them. Okay, the so this is just like all the scripts, and you can cat into one file, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, what does everyone okay. think? Is this like going to be an improvement to our page load time, or going to hurt it? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, climbed up. Climbed up. Okay. Seems like it's sure. working its way up. All right. Uh, so I did this, um, and our load went. Uh, Nine seconds to eleven point seven. Whoa, seconds. whoa! But it's just concatting, which is like less requests and a good thing. Yeah, so we, we went to slower. thirty requests. We we made it slower. Interesting. Uh, and so we we looked at this some more, and it turns out that since we're shipping one JavaScript file on like versus lots of individual ones, yeah. it sort of pushed out that initial paint time. Right. Quite uh, a like bit because you'll just have the uh, one big render blocking request, and now it's a very sizable thing in the download, especially in a throttled environment. Yeah, it's not so good. Okay. So uh, thumbs down on that one, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, fix number two, 
you told me about this one. Uh, add the defer attribute uh, on my script tag. Yeah, so defer attribute, um, uh, kind of like the cousin, the brother of the async attribute, um, but a little different. It does, basically, the defer is uh, essentially a contract saying, I'm not using document write in this script. Um, but in addition to, to that, it allows the browser to continue to, to parse um, HTML as it just continues on the page. And you usually end up yeah, with like a, a faster thing. Um, and uh, so, do you guys think it's like an improvement? Yeah. Going to help at all with our load time? Uh, it's climbing up. OK, I'm going to say people think it's an improvement. So uh, flat. 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 Just nine seconds. So. Uh, OK. That's but you know, the internet has lots of lists, and there are more options for good. us. Good. OK, great. Uh, fix number three, group the style sheets together in the head above script tags. Ooh. So the idea is that you put your style sheets above any script tags because the browser can only send out like six requests at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the rest. Yeah, so um, like you wouldn't want to interleave because style sheets are going to be more important when it comes to like the rendering and what things look like. So if they're the most important things, you want them to be the first things to start because if there are a lot of requests, like there are 40 on this page, then we're going to hit our maximum of six requests per host name, 10 requests total, and then like all the next requests get queued it's out. It's just like I have the spec reading to me right now. It's, it's actually. Um, the, this behavior of 6 and 10 is unspecified. However, all browsers do implement it the same way. So today I learned. Hmm? Thanks, Paul. Right? There you go. OK. Flat again? Flat. Hmm. Seems like everyone kind of agrees with us. Just like, this doesn't really do much. Yeah. I mean, was the, like, did the load just change in any way? You know, it was interesting. When I did this, I sort of saw this like flicker of like half painted things, and then it snapped in again. And so it definitely affected something, but our load time didn't really move at uh, all. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh. OK. All right. You got one more? Fix number four. I really like this one. Minify our JavaScript and CSS. Classic. So you use something like Uglify and like nice. YUI compressor for our CSS and Ooh. shrink the file size and then send it down. Oh, every, wow. People are Reaction. Yeah, really thinking this is good. Minify. Wow, it's really going up. OK. Ooh. I mean, Minify is it's less bytes. It's the jam. Yeah. yeah. It's less bytes. It's good. Hey, OK, it worked. Uh, and yeah. It did something. So we're down to 7.6 seconds on that load. Thumbs up. That's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. Nice. and this is without any of the other fixes. We just minified the sources. Right. So we're still shipping the same number of files, which is like 40, 39. Cool. And it dropped us like a lot. That's good. What if we took all of them and we put them together? Good question. OK, so all four fixes at the same time, like, what do you think? Effective? Not? Like, Will it be more effective than, than uh, fix four on its own? No. Somewhat positive. Mm, positive. But, po uh, yeah. OK. Turns out we basically hit the max when we did the compression of the Yeah, just files. like marginally better than, than the minification that we were just looking at. Yeah, so, so it took like the best case load time that we had and shipped less requests. So okay. I mean, we had an improvement. Yeah. And in fact, before we move on, uh, this is the end of the interaction. But can you get that off the screen? Oh. I guess. Thank you. I guess before someone figures out how to, you know, send the messages. To yeah, just open something. up the console and yeah, spam is, it with uh, them and then start doing right. loops. Real quick. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, so we were using onload as like our just measurement, uh, the metric that we're just like for all those. Yeah. Right. But you were also pointing like. Onload is kind of a crude metric. You were pointing out that in the style sheet one, you actually that number didn't change, but you saw things were rendering uh, like starting a little bit earlier, even though it ended at the same time, right? Right. So like, there's this question: if we're really trying to evaluate the load time, like, can we use something a little bit better? Like, can we use better metrics than mm -hmm, than uh, onload? And so um, Sam and I have worked on a project with some other folks uh, called Lighthouse. Um, Lighthouse does a lot of things. It does auditing for best practices of web development, and especially around progressive web apps. But it also does uh, a nice job of, of measurement and delivering high-quality performance metrics. 
Um, and so this is just a screenshot of what Lighthouse looks like on the command line. So it's available just on the command line. You can run in continuous integration, but also in a Chrome extension and, and a few a, places. And a node module. Like, we use the node module in yep. this case. Yeah, so actually we took the node module and then just put like a little charty uh, uh, module in front of it and a little tool called PWmetrics. And so it just passes a URL, it runs it through Lighthouse, takes the numbers out, plots them. And these are all like more meaningful metrics for us when we're trying to measure this page loading and when it's interactive, when it paints, and when a user can start to sort of use the site. Yes, excellent, exactly. So we ran this uh, on the site with yep. before and after. So top is before the baseline, no changes at all, and the last one is this with everything after. applied? Yeah. 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 So you can see that we, we shrunk that time to interactive, which is basically when the user can start using your application, yeah. and in this case, the website. Um, so we went 3,900 milliseconds to 3,300. So It's faster. 16% faster. Yeah. It's not bad. That's, yeah, yeah, that's we took fine. some techniques that we found online, and we applied it to this very specific site, yep. and we did get some wins. Yeah, totally. Um, but also, like just going through this, I just kind of wondered, I'm looking at it, you know, 16%, like, that feels good, and that's, that's, that's worth something. But also, like, how fast could it be? Like, are we anywhere near close to, like, bottoming out at, like, the point of diminishing returns? Or, like, plenty of room left? And so, like, the way that we did this was we just basically take these techniques that we saw, try them out, yeah. see if it works. Reload the page, like, uh, oh, seems faster, maybe try some more, eh, yeah. you just keep stacking. And so I want to like think about what if we could kind of invert that process. Instead of just going right at it and applying fixes, kind of what if the fix is the last part that we do? So starting in kind of the first place, what you really want to identify is the, the user perceivable effect. Now here we're talking pretty much about just page load right. and just that kind of narrative of going from a blank page to things on it. Um, but we could be talking about scroll, input latency, other interactions like that. Um, after that, you want to kind of look at what is happening, identify the kind of the, the critical path, and figure out what is the primary cost, what is consuming time. Um, from there, you're going to like, you like something looks interesting. It looks like there's some behavior that's a bit unoptimized. Yeah, like the cost is going to be because of a reason. Right. So you're going to drill in, and ideally, you're going to find the reason why it's slow. Yeah. And so the reason why it's slow is, is the root cause. Um, and you're like, this is the thing. And at that point, that point's a good time to try and apply some fixes. So we kind of just go through the measuring and profiling, diagnosing, identifying, and then we attempt some fixes, and then we're I, in a good place. I like that. That's good. Like you measure, you profile, yeah. you diagnose. It's, it's like uh, MIPTIA. It's like MIPTIA? MIPTIA. It's what MIPTIA? MIPTIA. You measure, you profile, you diagnose, you identify and you uh, attempt. Miptia. Oh, you're making an acronym of it. MIPTIA. Mip MIPTIA. MIPTIA. It's the new framework for performance <laughs> diagnosis. Ooh. There was rail, and that was cool, but that's so like 2015. Sure. MIPTIA is so 2016. Yeah, totally. Right? Like you just hear MIPTIA, MIPTIA. No. Like people are shouting it, I hear it. No. <laughs> really? Come on. No. All right, it's, it's fine. Well, just kidding. All right. So first step in, measure, in MIPTIA, in MIPTIA. So you need to measure. And measuring is important yeah, because before, right. if you don't measure, yeah, I got you it. can't do the rest. The idea. <laughs> right. So we're going to uh, use this really cool JavaScript API that's shipping everywhere, uh, performance mark and measure. Yeah. And what this is going to let us do is actually, in our JavaScript code, put these performance marks. So We'll be able to say, this is when I'm instantiating this jQuery plugin. This is when this view shows. This is when I fetch the data. And this yeah. is how long it takes. And like, yeah, so it requires a little bit of work and go in and instrument uh, your code. But it's really useful to be able to talk about times and durations and things in your terms rather than uh, the browser's terms. And so like, we applied it on, uh, on the site. And so um, in addition to just getting the information out in the in jo client side JavaScript, it also kind of augments the Chrome Dev tools. So in the timeline, you know, you could kind of look at this flame chart and like try and diagnose what is actually happening here, or just kind of look up at your performance measure um, because everything is kind of labeled here. Yeah. So I mean, this is this shows up right in Dev tools, which is really handy yep. when you're trying to profile what exactly is taking a lot of time. So uh, should we profile this? Let's give it a go. All right. All right. So uh, I'm bringing up the site, and we're going to go look at it over in the timeline. Uh, let's see. We'll keep on network. 
JavaScript profile screenshot seems good. This seems good. 3G network still enabled. Cache disabled? 3G, yep. Yep, okay. all right. Reload. Uh, reload. When you hit Command R here, it's going to reload, and it's going to wait until uh, three seconds after the unload event fires, and then it will just stop recording automatically. But if you want, you can just stop it yourself. Pro tip, Sam, for you. That's a nice one. OK, so this is just the overall look of everything that's happening. That's a lot of network requests. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've got a lot of network requests all up in here. Uh, the purple requests are style sheets, and uh, these guys are scripts. Uh, images here, those go out quite a ways. Um, and then down here is the main thread. Uh, here is those marks, good stuff. So there's a little bit of JavaScript activity down here. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of network action. So we're really looking at like when do we paint something on the screen? Because that's, right. that's what we want to optimize. Right, exactly. So OK, first step, measure. Um, really, so we can just drag this and kind of see the film strip of screenshots. And the first paint is right in here, right when we get that painted. And it's then like later images. And two stuff. seconds. Yep, so we're at about two seconds here. And if I just kind of zoom to that area, all right, down here, main thread, not doing a whole lot. Yeah, it seems pretty empty, which is like confusing because usually you see a lot of stuff there, and that's what's preventing the paint. Right. But in this case, we're not really doing much JavaScript. Right. Now, I will point out at the end over here, this stuff, uh, if I actually just zoom in a bit, uh, we do see a recalc, a recalc, a layout, and this little green guy. That's Whew. our paint. That's, that's, that's our what paint. we care about. And that is actually our first paint. Um, and so that's our first paint. Oh, that's and nice. He's right there. That's nice. But so it actually, here's, so what I want to do at this point is <laughs> make this paint happen sooner. Yeah, it seems like we should be able to push that like, way back so it's not at uh, 2,600 milliseconds for our first frame. Yeah, OK. So optimize first paint. Yeah. That's our goal. Now, the thing is, there is actually a relationship between what's happening here and the stuff up here. And check this out. It's kind of kind of cool. So I'm just holding down Shift to get this little selection. But if we look at when this paint happens, what just finished? Oh, jQuery. Yeah, actually, yeah. Ah. yeah. So check it out. So jQuery.js. Oops, sorry about that. Wait. So you 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 have like commits in jQuery, right? Uh, yeah. So I do. it's basically your fault on your own website. <laughs> That's nice. We'll fix your. We'll fix it. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Okay, so um, so jQuery just does finish, and actually, this is the reason why. Remember with the concat. Remember how concat right, makes things right. slower. Imagine that like these, all these other scripts are also just tacked on. So this one request is much bigger, right? I like so, that sound. Like that's what I imagine. Mm, that's the sound of the network. It it is the sound of it's the. Crazy. Okay. Now the other thing I do want to point out here is uh, only little tiny uh, red squares. That's usually like it's important. Yeah, it's actually the network priority, and uh, a medium high or highest uh, network priority is a pretty strong indication that it is render blocking. Um, now that's not like 100% of the time, but generally that rule works pretty well. So render blocking uh, requests is exactly why. You can see, like, you know, these images not render blocking, but pretty much jQuery render blocking. The paint, yeah. the render, jQuery. happens right when it's all jQuery. jQuery. It's jQuery. The okay. last render blocking request finished. It's fine. I know you're trying to like push off the responsibility, but clearly it's jQuery. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. So, um, so right, render blocking resources, and we don't want them to be render blocking. No, like we I, should like make less things red. Exactly. So uh, now that we've kind of figured that oh, out. Oh, I, I know where you're going. Yeah. So actually, first thing that we want to do is take the scripts, make sure, uh, take all the scripts, make them not render blocking. So we're going to. This was my fix. Apply, right? yes, the defer attribute uh, to all the scripts. So sorry. Yeah, it's yours. Now, in addition to the script tags, I'm also going to apply it to oh. uh, do some. Sorry, what? I, this is so nice of you. I, I don't have to oh, look God. up your email address, because I just have it right here now. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Why? Really, really nice. All right, but go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I, I don't know why we didn't catch this. OK, anyways. <laughs> Style sheets moving to the bottom. Um, so we're going to move them to the bottom. And actually, this is pretty cool. Um, 
moving style sheets to the bottom, kind of we've always thought that like that might be better if you don't if they're not super important. Um, and since some of this actually changed recently, I'll explain a little bit of what happens. So previously, um, and previously especially in Chrome, this is the behavior that would happen. Like let's say we're just parsing HTML, doing some stuff, we find some of these uh, style sheets in the body, so we kick those network requests off, and basically we just wait until all of them are done downloading, and when all of them are done downloading, then we do style, layout, and paint. Oh, that seems not great. Right, because these are, we treat them as, as render blocking and we just don't do anything. So um, as of this summer, Chrome changed its behavior and actually falls in line with the rest of the browsers. So the new behavior is if we find um, style sheets in the body, we will kind of like flush what the page should look like at that point, and then also when they're done, we'll do it again. Okay, so now it seems like it's a good idea to put non-critical CSS into your body. Yeah. So you get this win. Right, so the browser will be able to paint the page at that point, but also like as it moves forward, it'll, it'll pick, it, pick them up and apply the rest. Seems good. Yeah, so in this case, kind of what it looks like, and there's a lot going on here, but uh, at the top we have these purple style sheets. These are the guys in the head. Now, the scripts that we applied defer to, thank you, uh, these are now green, nice, so they're down here. And uh, the style sheets down here, uh, these ones are the ones that I moved to the, to the bottom of the body. Um, they're down here. So check this out. The paint that we were looking at before, it's right here. And um, if you look, we have all these other style sheets, right? Now before we wait until all of these finished, and also these scripts too, but now like we're able to get, get that first initial paint out much sooner and then the rest with the style sheets. Yeah, it seems like a major win. Yeah. This is good. So uh, pretty good. Now that we went through this uh, process, like a pretty good win, and we go back to measure, yeah. and take another look at just the overview. So if we just took a screenshot of uh, the timeline in this case, and since we have those performance mark and measure in there, we, you sort of get a feel for what's eating up the most of your time. Uh, and what's weird is the slip nav. It's like, you see how oh, big yeah, that yeah, is? Yeah. Um, so like I zoomed into this stack and it's actually taking uh, on my phone 60 to 90 milliseconds to build this. And what this is is the navigation element uh, on the top, yeah, which it's is just, it's hidden by default. It's the, yeah, it's just the top nav. Um, it's just instantiating some stuff on the top nav, which like shouldn't really take 100 milliseconds. Seems really weird. Right, so that sets off an alarm bell. Um, and then you looked into it, so, what, yeah, so what's let's, happening? Uh, let's just like go through it here. So um, in my timeline here, what I can do is I can zoom right in uh, to where we're evaluating the slip nav, which is all the way over here. And I know because I looked at it before. Should I flip off the network real quick. Yeah. I know by looking at it before that uh, a lot of work happens in this uh, plugin visibility toggle. So oh. Let's take a look at the. Yeah, even nav. like the uh, force layouts and stuff. Yeah, it's like a whole bunch of work Wait, down here. How much? Uh, there's, there's, oh, because it animates right after? Yeah, it animates, I guess. Uh, curious. Weird. I didn't like see an animation when it loaded. Yeah, me either. But let's look at the source code. Okay, doke. Um, and like I know what this code does is it just sort of hops into this block here, which is calling this slide up right here and adding a class of hidden. Wait, so oh, is, this is just the jQuery slide. JQuery up. slide up. You know that whole like okay. effect. Mm -hmm. um, so we should get a better idea of what this feels like. So what I will do is we'll just put a breakpoint right here. Tight and we'll reload the page. Okay, cool. And so here we are at our breakpoint, uh -huh. uh, and you can see that our, our menu is actually open here. Uh, oh, so okay. It hasn't been Let split up. up yet. So here we are, um, and let's just look at what's happening. Wait, 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 wait. Duration zero. So that's just j first argument of jQuery slide up is the duration. Yes. And passing in zero. Zero. But a zero in a length animation is like no animation. It's like display none. But. Yeah. But it was doing like 90 milliseconds of work. Yeah, like a whole bunch of. From this. Tweens and, yeah. And create jQuery deferred objects. But so, but wouldn't there be like like a fast path where they're like, okay, if it's zero, we'll just like yeah, immediately hide I, it I, and skip the whole like I, creating animation. I agree. Stuff. I agree. That would that make sense. seems like it would make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, it doesn't. <laughs> so we're paying the cost there of creating the tween object. Yeah. And right. then creating the jQuery deferred wrapper to tell us when it's done. Yeah. And then animating it for zero duration. 
and then and then doing that each time reflowing for, for every single menu each yeah. time time we do this. It's uh, expensive. Okay. So as you would say, there's an opportunity here to yeah. make this a lot better. There's an opportunity. So what we did was we just switched it to display none if duration equals zero and yeah. basically fixed the entire problem. Yeah. So that was good. Straightforward fix. Um, so yeah, going through this, identifying that, high, uh, that slick nav was, it was pretty costly and it was pushing out this time to interactive because we really want the main thread to settle down so that when the user you know, starts to, to work with the site, it's available for them. And we were able to identify this because we had those annotations. It Ooh. made it really easy. Nice stuff. So in total, we did a few things in this, in this case. Uh, the scripts and the styles, we're moving them down. Um, also the images, I didn't mention this, uh, they, but they were taking quite a while. And so just really basic compression and fixed one, the sizing of one, really boring. Uh, and the top one did apply a link rail preload to get that request going out really, really early. Lastly, the slick nav. Slick nav, so, right. So we didn't do any like bundling, any concat, any minifying, um, and didn't like figure out what else we can remove from that site. I'm sure that all of these things would also have impact, but going through this process, like these actually are not the highest impact things for the site. Right. So uh, we should look at the results now. Let's do it. Uh, so this was before we did anything. First baseline, yep. Then this was after my fixes. Your stuff. Which are pretty nice. It's good. Then these are with your fixes. Yeah. So uh, a few things to point out. The contentful paint, that first paint where there's actually stuff on the screen, that came in quite a bit. And a lot of that had to do with the, the defer and the async and, and all that stuff. And also, but the time to interactive also slid in uh, quite, quite a bit. Yeah, so we were able bits. to drop that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So we went from 2,400 milliseconds to 1,500 milliseconds which is great. Pretty good. And this is on a 3G connection too, which yep. is really good. Yep. And then our time to interactive went from 3,900 to 2,700. Again, really good. Feel solid about that. I mean, still plenty of more opportunity, but um, it's a good place to start. So, okay, so in total, uh, a few things that we, we are left with. Um, applying just kind of generic performance techniques blindly and just kind of guessing like, expect it's going to sometimes be better, uh, sometimes be worse. Be worse. That bundle thing, I mean, I did not expect that. Right, totally. That made it a lot worse. And that's, you know, that seems very common to do. Right. So always just measure, go through uh, the process of, of understanding the critical path and, and diagnosing that situation before you get into the things. And also the last thing, just use great metrics. Um, uh, putting a lot of work into uh, moving one metric if it's the wrong metric, is is not going to work out well. So uh, use nice use tools um, to that help you with good metrics. You're missing one, I'm like the most important one, really. Missing one. Yeah. With the what? Miptia, Paul. Oh, Miptia. right. We learned Miptia. Don't forget about Miptia. Okay, yeah, Miptia. I like it. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>